Hi, welcome to another fascinating episode of the Barber Shop. Today we have the founder of Plevo, an extremely fascinating business because it's been built to 100 million dollars in revenue. It's profitable and it's done with raising very limited amounts of cash. Introducing Venki, the founder of Plevo. One fine morning, uh, when I woke up and was reading newspaper, I saw an ad for co-founder I wanted. I was like, yeah, I'm the co-founder. Initially, we had there. So then I quit and then started a Momo outlet in India. In Ahmedabad. I think money is important, but beyond the point, you don't care about it. So think of our platform as a Lego platform. Okay. Lego blocks, right? So you provide all these different blocks as a business. We don't offer you everything package. You can take our blocks, arrange it the way you want, and that's what our APIs do. So ours is a broad horizontal platform mm. where it's available for different use cases. In 2019, we decided to move to Texas. Uh, a lot of people did that. No, no, but Elon followed us after that. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to take credit for that. Right? So that was my fanboy moment. Okay. He, he moved to Texas four months after we moved. Huh? Work happens on Zoom. Mm. Relationships are built offline. Tell me about you, yeah. Tell me about. Tell me. Uh, I hear there is a cloud kitchen for momos involved. There is white operator <laughs> involved. There is sure, sure. school time entrepreneurship. But would love to hear about how, like, what the pre plevo life. Sure. Was. Was, um, I mean, actually, I I grew. So I was born in Ahmedabad. Okay. Right. So that's where the Ahmedabad connection is. Okay. My mom's side was in Ahmedabad. Okay. They still are. Uh, so I was born there, but uh, my parents are here. Okay, in, in Delhi. Yeah, uh, in CR Noida. Okay. Right, so I grew up in Noida. Ah. I studied here and grew up in Noida till my school day. Okay. Post my schooling, I left to Bangalore and did my engineering there. So even before that, uh, when I was in, I think, uh, fifth standard or sixth standard, ah. I got fascinated with electronics. Okay. So, you know, I and a friend of mine in, in school, we built our first, uh, you know, electromagnet. Really? Yeah, like you wind, wind the, yeah, yeah. the copper wire to, uh, a, to a nail, uh, or not a nail, but a screw, Yeah, the thick one, and then we build it. Electric you put electricity through it and then uh, it becomes uh, so, magnetic. So, so the concept was not very clear on how it works, but uh, it worked. And uh, that was fascinating, uh, right? Like an you know, electromagnet and it does a lot of things. Then we made a telegraph machine. Uh, and so there were two electromagnets. You put a blade on this one, uh, and the circuit was such when you when this hits, that would also hit. So uh, that becomes a telegraph machine, because uh, that's what they do correct. on a telegraph machine. And then, uh, you know, how old were you in this world? Six standard. I That's amazing. How old? Six standard. Uh, right. Like 11 years. 11, uh, 11. This was 1996, 1997. Uh, so I was very interested in that. So that, what I would do is during summer vacations, go to the school library, sit down and like look at all the electronic circuits. And I was very fascinated with that. And the irony was whatever, like the same thing that I was taught in class, I would do miserably. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like the, like everything, the questions were very theoretical. They had no meaning to like what was getting done. Uh, you know, I, I clearly realized I have a fascination for tech. I think that what then what happened is 1997, 1998, that changed. Because uh, this required a lot of physical work. So then what happened is, uh, you know, I mean, Pravindi Mehta has these train fairs. So my dad and I went there when 1997. My dad bought me an IBM Aptiva uh, okay. desktop. Okay. I mean, back in the day, it was super expensive. Yeah, correct. Super expensive, right? So he bought me that. Then I was like, I was just hooked on to it the whole day long. Right, and there was no internet. Right, it was just dial-up internet. So it was not internet that was exciting. It was the exciting fact was I could still do things on the uh, computer without having to go physically. Yeah. So that's what got me even more excited now. Okay. So I was on that the whole day long. So that I got. Who addicted. taught you like like basic programming? And... No, I mean just self learn. Right, really? like there were cyber cafes everywhere in Noida back then. So you would just go to these cyber cafes and spend time there. And the deal was like I get five hours, and then I would do in return some work for the cyber cafe guy. Right, because wow. I mean, we didn't have money back then. As in, like, I, I was not earning. Yeah. Right. So, kid, no? Yeah. I mean, kid, I'm not sure, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> teenager. I think teenager is the right word. Okay. You say kid to a Gen Z, they'll be like, that's not a kid, right? <laughs> whatever. Roll top, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, uh, I mean, going back, so we struck some deals and, and uh, that's how the whole thing started out. I would go to the cyber cafe, sit there whole day long, and, uh, you know, internet craze came then. So, 1998, I mean, fast forward, 1998, 1999. Uh, I sort of was hooked into you know cyber cafes and stuff. I don't know if you realize if you go back like back in the day we had these ICQ messengers yes. and Yahoo messengers. Yes. So whole day long. MSN, just, MSN, 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 Yahoo and ICQ. I so correct. It was yeah. just that, right? Yeah. So whole day long we'd be on that, and there were groups and I mean people I think were random chatting as well, but there were groups which did useful things. So there was a developer group, there was a hacker group, there was a lot of groups. So I was part of a lot of these groups, right? And then that's, that's when amazing. 
these were all folks in the states uh. right so that's how that's when i realized there's a lot that can be done without you know losing advantage on location right and in in india or like in noida there was actually nobody i would like sort of spend time with so that's what that's what happened and like i think every now i'm sort of fast forwarded right this is 10th standard like every like you 10th finished i wanted to have computer science so then you take it with obviously pcm c right so but then like i i thought i was decent at at math and all of that so i everybody like everybody else in delhi aspire for iit yeah. right so joined a coaching center two years would go there to for two years but it was just painful right like i mean it was so theoretical like with all the formulas and all that i just it was very very painful cuz cuz every time i would be like okay we do this but then where do i apply this yeah it was just not yeah. my thing okay so but anyways that happened i was not so interested in that <laughs> and on the side this yahoo thing was happening okay right so what happened is back in the day there was these search engines like us uh, alta, alta vista alta vista google was just starting out yahoo was more popular right so there's some attraction between me and us uh, early on right but anyways so so these were the three web three websites so it was a lot of this ad based model because nobody i mean dot com right like nobody had a business model so it was all ad based right so everything's free for consumers but everything is ad based correct everybody was running those pirate so a lot of ideas happening and there was a platform called link share ah uh, there was no google right so there was link share and they were running these ad platforms right buying selling uh, buy side sell side so i was i registered on link share and then community told me like they are doing these experiments in us the people are running these projects so you got to get a lot of inspiration in terms of what people are doing so what i started is calling free calling from uh, delhi to bombay right mumbai uh st calling st was super expensive back in the day right like with yeah, yeah of course i don't know uh, so the the thing was and this was happening over so ironically that's what we do it pay now it's wipe but it was also went back then uh i had no idea how that works all i was doing is buying some physical cards like uh, telecom cards you plug that into a device you plug internet so there was a uh, internet service provider called dishnet and dsl Yeah, so Dishnet and DSL, I got a uh, you know their I don't even know what it was. I don't think it was a lease line or whatever it was. DSL line, uh, I think that's what they uh, call it. So you plug that into the car, and then you have an internet pipe out of which you could do twelve calls at one time. Right, like twelve calls would go through from from at one time. Wow. Yeah. So started that service, and then LinkShare. The deal was basically LinkShare was all clicks. Uh, so they also had like a couple of. So it was a marketplace. There were a couple of guys who were wanting to do audio ads. Uh, So I would play audio ads before the call happened. You have to listen to it, and then the call would connect for X number of seconds. Post which the call would disconnect, and the ad would play again. So that was wow. that was the that was my first startup. And how much would it cost? A, a free, consumable. free. But the inf- infra, there's no infra. No, no. I, I mean that was where. Well, so the this is how the deal happened. Uh, it was all ad based. Uh, the card company. I wrote a business plan, sent it to them, and said like, if you give me four cards. This is my business plan. Uh, Link. These guys have already agreed to be their ad provider. We make so much money. And I'll pay this back uh, from a percentage basis plus interest rates. They agreed to it. Oh wow! Yeah, they agreed. I I don't even know how they agreed to it. Okay, so there's a funny story there. Uh, cell phones were not prominent. Correct. I am like a 16, 17 year old kid. Uh, I think uh, not. What year? 2000? No, no. 1999. Nine. Okay. Nine and two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. Uh, late two thousand. Nine and nine. Two thousand. Right. Uh, So there was one of the five star hotels, and at that time, like you were very scared to get inside a five star hotel. Uh, I come from a middle class family, uh, right? So, so, so that card come guy. So the reason they agreed was uh, one of their reps had come from the states here. Okay. And they wanted to meet me. I mean, not just for me. They didn't only come for me. They were finding reseller, trying uh, to find resellers in India, uh, right? Because white call, like uh, internet calling laws, did not exist in Canada. Like they were trying to find resellers. So they said, "I'm going to be in India. Let's talk in in person, and then we'll decide whether." You know we can do this with you. Uh, so, whatever. Like this was very embarrassing. I mean, I so I spoke to my friend and he said, "Look, how do you go to a five-star hotel and and then he's going to ask you a phone number? If you give a landline number, he'll think like you have no money, <laughs> right?" So, so what do we do, right? And we then go went and inquired cell phone numbers and prices. It was insanely expensive. Correct. Insanely expensive. Okay. Uh, so then we, uh, pages were cheap. Ah. Uh, so actually, what a pager. Wow. Pager, and then we went met him. It was so funny. Like we didn't have a car, so I took my dad's scooter, ran <laughs> into a five star hotel with this scooter, hung it in the five star uh, scooter. Nobody should know it. Yeah. We had a scooter. We 
went in his pocket, and yeah. then went inside as if like we came in a car and, <laughs> and dropped it. Then I took my friend. He knew nothing about this. The reason I took my friend is just so that he doesn't feel like I'm doing all this all on. Ha. Right. So so we went did that. You know the pager was there. He asked me his number as expected. Uh-huh. I gave him the pager number. Ah. Uh-huh. Right. I said I applied for a cell phone connection. They're not giving it to uh, non adults. Minors. Uh-huh. Yeah, non adults. So. I have a pager number right now, so, <laughs> so that story worked. <laughs> and 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 that did he come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post which is when he approved, you know, giving us four cards, and so he, they said two cards right now. If you hit this ad revenue, I'll give you two more. It's like a tranche based thing. So he said yes. So we we start getting volumes. I was in the community, so we had free distribution. I would just post it in the community in one of these Yahoo channels or you know ICQ channels, and it would just include, like people. I would get volumes. So I had to spend no money on distribution. Like for example, my mom would call somebody, one of her relatives in Mumbai, as an example. So STD is expensive, uh-huh. so they would just call this number instead, uh-huh. and this number would take the call through wipe and take it out. So for them, it's a domestic call, right? And we had a software also on the laptop. It was a re- uh, I mean, I didn't write the software. It was uh, resold uh-huh. by that card company. Uh-huh. Uh, and then basically, you can put colors and your logo and stuff. So that's what we did. So she would call your number to and tell you. We had a we had a Noida number. Uh-huh. Right, a landline number, uh-huh. which is connected to this card. Correct. The card would convert that call into an IP call. Okay. And then take it on IP till Mumbai, and Mumbai will convert it back to landline, and the calls connect. Wow. So it's a and then you got, you got a. How how do you split revenue between you and? Or you charge the customer? No, customer free. Okay. Right. The the ad guy is getting money. Oh, ad guy is paying me money oh, for the number of listens. Right. Yes, the number of listens on the ad. So total, it ran for six months. Okay. <laughs> and post six months, like I got a notice from VOT saying this is not allowed. Oh, is it? Yeah. So we had to shut it down. Uh, <laughs> so, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, because look, the DSL internet pipe was always choked, right? So uh-huh. I think they audited or something happened. Correct. And then I got a notice saying this is not allowed. Uh, so well, then, that's enterprising, man. That is really enterprising. I, I, I think so, so. I think looking back, I, I think it was about like getting that exposure from that community. So I was really lucky to be at the right place, getting that exposure, because. Folks were doing this in the states, right? People were doing this in US. In fact, somebody else was doing this in India also. People were doing Delhi to Hyderabad. The, uh, there's, uh, there's a company called Hot Phone. Ha. H O T F O O N. This was they were doing Delhi to Hyderabad. I did okay. Delhi to Mumbai. Okay. And my company was called weird. I mean, back in the day, everything had to have a number in it. Ha. So it was called E Services ha. for, as a number four, ha. India. Oh. Right. So that was the company's name. It was weird, but yeah. Uh, you were five lakhs in four or six months. Yeah, yeah. So um, at that time, it was a lot. And of money, my bank yeah. account, so I had to give the checks to my dad, and he had to cash it. <laughs> uh, so he, him, and I created a joint account, and then he uh, and cashed it. Yeah. And you were doing your eleventh standard. I was doing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, okay, so this is so IIT thing was totally out for a toss. I was just doing this uh, at night, and I bombed in twelve. Uh, I I didn't get into any of the entrances because uh, I wouldn't go. I was uh, doing this all night, all day, all night long. Right. Your parents are okay with this, like that. You are kind of spending time. I I don't think I told them everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they knew everything that was going. But when the five lakh rupee check came, ah, so they, they know it came from some venture. Uh, they don't know all the details, right? Yeah, yeah, if they ever watch this and this comes out, they will now find out. <laughs> this explains all of that. Yeah, so uh, so twelfth was like really bad, uh, bad grade in school. I basically couldn't clear any of the entrances because uh, I didn't stop prepare. Yeah, I think it's not. I was easy sitting cyber cafe and doing this right, no, trying to find to add yeah. folks and all of that. So twelfth was really really bad to a point where then I was very clear I wanted to do computer science. My heart was there, like the, writing code and okay, huh. computer science. That's it, right? So I told my dad I only want computer science. So then you went to college. Yeah, so I went to college, finished my four years. Okay, so the third year is where I found a you know team. We did a project. But did you enjoy the because again engineering college in India is is a lot more theoretical. Yeah, yeah. And it's like your eleventh, twelfth. But the good thing was uh, in computer science, like all whatever they were teaching, I was already aware of all that. So okay. that was that was good for me. So I didn't have to attend classes. Uh-huh. I I mean I had a good relationship with the teachers. Uh-huh. So attendance didn't matter. Right. And you do your projects on the side. Yeah, yeah. So like it was okay. So basically, it, we did multiple projects. Uh, right. And uh, I mean I was a lot into online stuff as well. Right. Uh, doing projects there, freelancing, all of that stuff. But then. Third year is when, you know, you have to do a major project, right? So uh, by that time, I had gotten a what what's the right word? Uh, I'd gotten bored with a, just pure software projects. So I wanted to go back to my electronic days and bring software to it, and that's where the microcontroller happened. So this is where uh, you know we as a team built a, our first humanoid robot. Okay. Uh, it was a it's not a legged robot; it's a wheeled robot, but it could move around and you know it had a mop. Which it was not very good at cleaning, but it would it was a good try. Yeah, it could try to clean. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, so that was the first version. 
and I, I'll send you some pictures of this later. This is like a Roomba. Ah, uh, so of the day. yeah, yeah. So Roomba, no, no. So I'll tell you how we uh, uh, like how I commercialized that. So there was third year, and fourth year I made a version increment of that. That was not with everyone. Uh, that was one more person, and then I started a company uh, separately, right? Like incorporated a company. It was called Robo Nens. Okay. Like robotic intelligence. And that, huh. So Robo Nens. Uh, and this was an incremental version of uh, what the earlier thing was. It had vision, it could speak, not as good as what you see all, all this right now, but a lot of existing libraries. Basic, huh? It was called OpenCV, IBM had this library called OpenCV. We used uh, that and uh, Dragon Speech Kerking software. Uh, so that would speak a long time ago. IBM acquired them. So that is what I used over there. Uh, so, so what the robot? Now that same robot which did all of that, now could talk and see. So he navigation अच्छे से करता था और बात भी कर सकता था like like a version of Siri but not like changing what 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 would a what would a owner use it for like what would कुछ नहीं करेगा इधर time pass था it was not for consumers it was not for consumers so then I figured how do I sell this हाँ so then I created a robotic like I sold this as a robotic kit to colleges and said hardware सारा बनाओ mechanical भी बनाओ I will give you SDK for this and you can write code to make it more better so you don't have to so computer science student loved it okay because they could do like research projects on this on vision. Okay. They don't have to go build all the physical stuff. So what they do, they decide. They got a platform. Correct. Right? So that's what they did. I sold it for. I mean, I got like around 25 lakhs. Really? That's a lot of money, man. No, but one time they don't have to buy kids. Other one kid was like 2-3 lakh rupees. Right? My cost was 50-60 thousand rupees. And they would sell it 2-3 lakh rupees. And then on top of that services, meaning you can add this, add this. Who are the customers? Who are those customers? College, right? College, 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 the college students in their final year project, right? Yeah. So college will take, and college will fund half, students will fund half. Mostly rich kids. Let me just put it that way. Mostly rich kids. Right? But they have passion to do it, guys. So they would buy it, and some people, not even passion, some people want to show why I built this project. So they can show it from here, they can show it in college project. Wow. Right, but whatever, it works, right? As long as you make money. So that happened. And that's when I programmed the microcontroller and everything else there, right? Wow. Uh, so, so that was an interesting journey in terms of how everything happened there. Uh, the robot was called Amiibo, A-M-I-B-O. Okay. Autonomous Mechanical Intelligent Bot. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Amiibo have advanced our domain, uh, Amiibo.com. I would love to see all the photos. Uh, I'll there. send you the photos. Uh, okay. Photos. okay. This can be a photo of my business card each other is for India. Ka. I'll send you that as well. It's like, you will laugh at that. <laughs> design, oh, I have designed it. <laughs> He's laughing at that. It's it's horrible, but whatever, right? So 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 that happened. Um, yeah, and then I got my first job into telecom. Ironically, also Lamp, telecom. Lamp, Lamp, Lamp. Subex. Okay. It's a publicly listed company uh, now. Back in the day, it was one of the first product companies in India. Okay. Right. Uh, so that was that is why it was exciting. So I went there, and I think CEO back in the day was very very enterprising. Like even as a like fresh grad out of college, when I joined them, he would take everybody out for lunch. Mm. Right, a larger group for lunch, like, you know, 30, 40 people for lunch. And he would not think we were fresh grads, right? And the way he would, like, talk to us, address us, talk about, like, how we started the win, that was very inspiring, I think. I still remember those days. So that was very inspiring. And then, yeah, I mean, corporate life happened for two, three years. And, okay. Yeah, I traveled a lot, you know, in multiple international countries and so on and so forth. 2008, I, I quit Subex and joined a uh, startup in the Bay Area called Naris Networks. Okay, so you left, you were in the U.S. then? Yeah. Right, in the Bay Area. Mm. And then when I went there in 2008, so this was when Google was building their entire campus, right? Like it was, it was not complete. Uh, so I was looking at that and it was fascinating and all of that. That was my first exposure to the startup world in the Bay Area, right? Uh, uh, this was so nostalgic from 10 years ago. So, okay. I, so in 10 years ago, the companies were all in Texas. Correct. Dallas and all of that, uh, right? This was in the Bay Area, so that was my first foray into that. And then one fine morning, I was in a hotel. One fine morning, when I woke up and was reading newspaper, I saw an ad for co-founder I wanted. That mind boggled me. I was like, yeah, I have a co-founder on newspaper, my ad there. That was like crazy to me, right? Why would somebody put an ad in a newspaper? Correct. But then I started again thinking, yeah, I have to do it, I have to do it, like, let's go back. And that bug bit me again. So then I quit, right? And then started a Momo outlet. In India? In Ahmedabad. In Ahmedabad. Right? Uh, yeah, and uh, why Ahmedabad? Cause and why Momo? Like why is someone uh, so, so robotic no, and so, so I, I telecom quit, and... I quit and I was in Noida with my uh, parents, 
right? And their place. Uh, and uh, basically, if you like, if you seen nine, sector 19 in Noida, who Athara sector, man, it's all like full momo ke Correct. It's full of that. Correct. Who time to say it? And momo, I love to. Ha, like, and momo is my favorite. I'm a Pune boy. Okay. So momo is not a thing for me. Okay. But when I came to Delhi seven, eight years back, no, now nine years back, sure. And the winters hit. And then I started having hot momos in Delhi winters. Yeah. I was like, bro, this that is, chutney. Um, uh, the mayo and the lal chutney and the orange. Oh my goodness, it is so good. Mm. I was like, yeah, I, I feel you. Uske uh, bina, week completely new. <laughs> Every week we have to have. <laughs> right? Yeah, so that happened. And uh, yeah, I mean, wo dekhe. so then, you know, I basically called a couple of my friends who were in Ahmedabad. And I said, I want to do something, I want to do something. Right? Because everyone is doing it. Ahmedabad is a big deal. And why Ahmedabad? Because I, I mean, I knew, um, I've, I've sort of gone there multiple times in my summer vacations and stuff. So people are foodies there. That like if somebody earns 100 rupees, they'll spend 50, 60 rupees on food. Ah. Right? So, Correct. So then I... So I come from Indore, which is also very Chatora city. Like it's, ah, ah, it's ah. very similar. Yeah, MP is also ah. not not very different. Ah. Right? Uh, but but yeah. So I said, uh, so I called him, called my friend and said, Wow, Momo is there. He said, Two can you have like, well, maybe said, Sorry. So I went there for a week to spot check everything. There was no Momo. So I said, Let's introduce Momo to Ahmedabad. Right? So I wasn't very successful with that, but whatever. Right? So I went there, started a small fast food, like, let's just call it a fast food outlet. Okay. Wow. And and uh, the initial plan was at a cloud kitchen. It was a fast food outlet. Okay. So started that. It was called Hunger Break. Okay. Uh, so like people would come there and people would be like, hey, Momo Suche. Right? Uh, and I had to explain. So I had to do like a and the problem uh, the mistake I made is I priced it very badly. I High have, or low? Very low. Okay. Twelve momos for twelve rupees. Oh. That was a disaster. I learned. The, I made the opposite mistake. I priced way too high. Very high. Okay. Uh, I mean this was a big mistake Haan. from my part, right? Because you had to do a lot of selling. And 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 uh, coaching. Ah. What a momo is. Correct. Wo 15 minutes before the question, we will take a plate. And we will take a plate and we will take three families. Correct. Usme se. Ah. So, how will the revenue come from? Ah. That was a big problem. Correct. So, fra- and then every day, you have to pay for it, you won't get revenue. Correct. So, frustrating. Ho gaya so, momo is, um, momo is something that lends itself to non-vegetarians a lot more than vegetarians. No, we have done a lot of innovation. So, so okay. what did you do in that? Paneer momo, I think, now we're getting something. At that time, we didn't get it. Paneer momo, momo pao. Okay. Ah, so Pau ke andar, pula chutney wale lucky bada ki jagah, wo momo ho jayega. Right? Aur momo mein bhi teen char aur variety nikale, dal momo. Right? I was proud of dal momo. Right? So, bahut sare humne innovation kiya tha usme. Ha. Momo Pau was the hot seller. Oh, really? Ah, wo dabeli jaisa lagta hai. <laughs> so, it was the hot seller. Right? Everything else like sold much less. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but I I mean what I realized is it's a very uh, rinse repeat business. Yeah. Like if I didn't show up or if uh, I didn't think about SOPs back then. Okay. Uh, this was my first operational business exposure. Yeah. And then my poor thing bad case was called automate case. So I started building a robotic machine to make the oh. so my focus is in yoga. Bro. So I thought that I have a robotic machine hai. Or, and if I have to build momos, then this is not the model. I have to be in a cloud kitchen model. So then I went back to my apartment, like house only. Uh, so I had a house, then I upgraded my house. Right? Uh, paisa nahi tha. I took a loan of 35 lakhs. Bilkul paisa nahi tha. Right, so I took a loan of 35 lakhs, right? And then it's been both karcha lakta. Hunger break setup karne mein lakh ka tha. That small Stop, part, drop. Uh, 12 lakhs to chala gaya. And then I mean a lot of mistakes made. Uh. What everybody else was doing is now I think this is too much information, but I think this is an interesting learning uh. for entrepreneurs, right? Which is jo ketchup baki sab dete na, wo wholesale mein aata, unka powder mein. Uh. You put water in that. I mean you will never eat that ketchup again yeah. if you tell don't come in the red bottle, you know? red bottle, they put it in a pouch. It has only powder. And they put hot water in it. Right? And they put it in a pouch, and then it gets hot like a sauce. And that's what you're eating called tomato ketchup. And that comes out like that pouch is like 5 rupees. And then you can sustain it for 5 days, 6 days. Right. We don't, I didn't feel like selling that. So we would actually buy ketchup from the supermarket behind. Maggie got tomato ketchup. We don't put it in the water. So, I was like, I'm ketchup. Yeah, I'm going to get ketchup. So, I'm going to get Right? Like, basically, nothing. And then, so a lot of money. Did you increase the price? Yeah, but you realize it's more late. Right? Because I was focused on like making sure everybody. Because, like, see, there were two, three problems. It was not just the price problem. 
He was there was also distribution discovery problem. Okay. People didn't know what Momo's was. I also st- I stick to people didn't know what was plus physical location physical and limitation. Ah, or physical location was right opposite a Pawaji stall, oh. which was very popular. So, oh. the people who came there, they didn't come here. And then, the only place they came from, they didn't come here. Exactly. They came here. They made another mistake. So, there were a lot of issues. Ho the, right. So, those are the learnings. Ah. And then, I said, "Boss, this will not go." So, by that time, I think I already spent twenty lakhs or something. Ah. Then, the house was upgraded a little bit. Ah. And said, "We will do it." I got a helper at home. I, I, that's when I got, uh, you know adopted my two dogs as well, Guapo and Bella. So dogs. Guapo right? and Bella. Yeah, Guapo is in Spanish is handsome. Okay. And Bella is beautiful. Guapo. <laughs> Spanish, right? Uh, so, so Guapo and Bella, uh, they both uh, one is from Delhi. Uh, Guapo is from Delhi and Bella is from Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad. Uh, okay. Right. So yeah. two states. <laughs> uh, two, both. Right. So I am linked to both of them. Uh, and then we took them to Bangalore later on. Whatever. Okay. But anyway, so so that happened, and then the Momo thing didn't. Uh, the cloud kitchen happened. I did it for another month. Uh, first problem was education. So we started putting pamphlets in everybody's places. People just wouldn't get it, right? Because so the cloud kitchen means what? You do it from home. Deliver it from home. Momo, sir. Momo, Momo. So, so two alternatives. One, we will freeze it and freeze it, which I think a lot of people are doing now. Uh-huh. So I'll make build the machine. We we'll freeze it and we'll supply everywhere in India. That was one model. Uh-huh. It was a little long term, black. Uh-huh. फर्स्ट प्लान ये था कि उसको बना के घर से डिलीवरी मॉडल होगा आके नहीं खाना राइट अब उसमें प्रॉब्लम ये था कि किसी को पता ही नहीं मुंह आया क्या तो एजुकेशन एजुकेट कैसे करोगे कैटेगरी क्रिएशन इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट स्पेशली इन फूड स्पेशली इन इंडल्डेंस फूड So, so healthy में कर सकते हो इंडल्डेंस फूड में कैटेगरी क्रिएट करना टेस्ट वाइन को क्रिएट करना वाइन पे उड़ गया बाकी सारा पैसा राइट एंड देन आई सेड बॉस ये तो बहुत जिस तरह से पैसा उड़ रहा है आई नो आई कांट सस्टेन इट टू लॉन्ग सो देन आई डू लाइक शट इट डाउन And then I you were how old at this time? Twenty seven, twenty eight. No, twenty five. Twenty five. Twenty five. Uh-huh. Right? Like this was twenty five, two thousand eight. Ah, uh-huh. I'm old now. Ah, uh-huh. but, but I was still young then. Ah, uh-huh. just saying. Still young now only. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm basically said I'm to no career now. I have no money left. Right? And uh, start interviewing for different places. And okay, so there's another nuance to this. I I think this is another lesson for all the young folks watching, right? The reason I quit my job at Subex is not because I didn't like the place and the work I was doing there. I loved the team, loved the work. Everything was amazing then. Then, and I think the company's changed now. Yeah. But back then like it was amazing. So I used to love everything I was doing there. I moved to Naras only for a hike. And the hike was 4x in salary. Wow. 4x was a US company. But 4x is a sizable hike. Yeah, love. 4x is a salary. So I just about. jumped for that. Ah. I just jumped for that, right? And yeah, I mean my salary was like You know, peanuts in Subex. Let's just say that compared to what the market is today. This is in two thousand seven. Ah, you know, कुछ पैसा भी नहीं मिलता था, right? So four X jump के लिए I move, and I think like looking back, I think that was a mistake. Was it? Yeah, because Naras, I just couldn't put my heart to it. Then like, वो फिर I wanted to quit. कुछ पैसा भी आ गया वो दो दो महीने ना अच्छा लगता है बैंक अकाउंट में देखने का. Ah, and then you're like, yeah, मजा नहीं आ रहा है. Correct. Right? Because the human nature is once you get it, yeah, you're like. But this is not giving me full. I think money is important. Yeah. Right. But beyond a point, you don't care about it. Yeah. Although I think right, like someone had said this on the podcast only that like your salary comes only one day, yeah. but you live the other twenty yeah, nine. Yeah. So it can't it can't be suboptimal if you're not enjoying it at all. Hmm. So I think uh, that was another learning. I think uh, I I say this to my team as well, right? Like I think money is important. You have to be comparative from a payroll perspective, pay point perspective in the market. But don't just make a decision for salary ever. Yeah, life's too short, right? Because uh, I think I'm. I mean, luckily I didn't survive there too long, Naras. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would have just wasted my years if I was just sitting there. But anyways, four X happened. A problem here was that when I started looking for a job after my Momo thing, my salary was so high. The previous round salary you're, you're, was so high. You're out. Nobody was paying me yeah. or willing to give me a job. I And this like, was in the US. No, India now. Yeah, no. So I'm not mad at him. But the four X salary was in the US, right? Ah, no, no. Okay, so it was a little complicated setup. I was in the US, but the salary was from India. For India, okay. Right, so Indian rupee with that. Okay. For actually India, I made with that. Okay. Right, because their plan was I will spend some time in the US, come back here, and then you sell to okay. telcos in India. Okay. That was the plan. All that never happened, but yeah, uh-huh. whatever. Right, so salary itna jada ho gaya that nobody was willing to give me a job. So I then so when I told them that was my actual salary. Ah. Uh-huh. So then, what did I have to do? I had to literally tell them that my salary was much lesser. So so people. Misquote the salary to increase the number. I had to misquote salary to reduce the number to get a job. Right? Anyways, then Huawei happened. Mm. Uh, I I went to Huawei. I think Huawei I learned a, like insane yeah. amount of stuff there. Right? Like I I think the Chinese culture teaches you a lot 
they are good with the pros and cons good and bad but what are the things you learned from the chinese culture at least corporate chinese culture yeah i mean i think they uh, it, it teaches you hustle right like you are pretty much like the number one leader now yeah. and they beat ericsson nokia yeah right uh, hollow hmm? they beat them hollow yeah yeah absolutely yeah. khatam kar diye unko right There's, those companies don't have any market share now right right i mean you can argue they had government backing this that whatever right but essentially that's what you learn like even at that scale how do you how do you retain that culture right i i i mean i think i've spoken somewhere else as well about some of this uh but without getting into too much detail i think essentially that's one lesson you know i want to keep at heart as an entrepreneur even 13 years into the game right like how do we as a company clevo not lose its dna 300 is nothing if you think of the employee count right mm-hmm. while well, it was 180000 people and they still had their hustle culture so i think that's what i learned there like how do you keep that how do, how do you communicate as leadership how do you keep that how do you create meaning for people but it go deeper in hustle culture because it's a word that gen z for example struggles to identify with often times demonizes to say hustle culture is killing creativity killing people leads to toxic work habits but you speak about it in a very positive way yeah. personally i am the kind of person who believes that nothing worthwhile comes out of not putting disproportionate effort absolutely a disproportionate effort and doing everything you can and then something to achieve outcomes as the only way to achieve something meaningful yeah, yeah, i mean although you will always remain mediocre yeah i mean virat kohli is not virat kohli because he didn't practice so many hours right he's just sitting in this chilling out he will be virat kohli today correct and or any other sports star for that matter so why do we think it's different in any other game correct everything is the same right like correct. and there's this concept of 10000 hours correct. when you become an expert correct right so i think i i totally agree with it in fact i mean i'm an elon fan boy people may hate him for whatever how his style i'm a, i'm a fan boy because the how he works okay right like he how as in like the number of hours he puts in yeah right so i'm i'm i don't want to jump too far ahead but but that learning that's the biggest learning that came from him do you have to put in the number of hours like so there was i think there's the debate you spoke about gen z yeah. there was a debate 5 7 years ago i'm sure the debate is still there i just don't listen to it anymore <laughs> online is hard work versus smart work you yeah. don't want to do hard work you want to do smart, smart work. work yeah i don't think you can cherry pick yeah you have to do both yeah that's the world where you have to be smart and you have to do hard work, work. that's yeah. what is hustle correct you can't be dumb and then be do putting in 18 hours of work <laughs> that doesn't work correct it's like hitting a wall yeah right so so you have to do both you can't cherry pick either or it's not either or you have to do both right and then cuz look if you are doing smart work why do you think the other person is not doing smart work yeah they are also doing the same smart work the only way to beat then beat them is like do just put in more hours yeah in fact now i have this thing in my bedroom it says i mean elon musk right yeah. it says i work 120 hours a week and that allows me to be 3x ahead of everybody else in terms of the work hours cuz everybody is putting in 40 hours a week mm. that's how i mean that's so why i have that quote not to scare everybody to say you have to work i mean at leo we don't talk about forcing anybody to any number of hours correct right i think but what i talk about is work ethic yeah. like how do you create that internal or intrinsic motivation yeah and also ownership like for me yeah, yeah. it's super important like that matter if you put in 5 minutes yeah. or 20 hours like that's not the thing do you own the outcomes completely yeah. for the work you're responsible for or for the work stream or pnl or yeah. product or whatever it is that you do um and that's where uh, i think that's where the debate becomes very intense right which is uh my like my sense of identity and this is something which for younger generation is my sense of identity cannot come from the work i do sure. and i stu- i personally struggle with that because yeah. my sense of identity always came from my poor professional pursuits i i i have a different perspective i think maybe this is why i'm okay with that side of the story as well uh-huh. which is that's fine as long as then be clear that like like you said nothing extraordinary is going to come out from of your work work is is work for you that Yeah. Be clear with that, right? And, and it's okay if you make peace with it. Then you're saying I'm doing work for just sustenance. getting my paycheck. Yeah, sustenance. It's sustenance ah. work. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. Then be clear with that, and 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 that's you you be at peace with it. But then isn't that at odds with the ambitions and aspirations of the generation, which is they want to retire early, they want a great life, they want to travel the world, they want experiences that obviously require currency. So वो भी चाहिए. Ah, but no, I think they are figuring it out also. Right? Like there are multiple ways they are figuring that out. Yeah. Right, which is freelancing, influencer culture, whatever. Right, they're figuring yeah. all of that out now. Yeah. But I think what what we're saying is then don't aspire to do something great. Yeah. Do something. 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 Do something
GitHub project was again a side gig or is it something that you were kind of no no so okay I'll I'll tell you my thought process of why that happened right so so Huawei happened I was in Brazil so China first Indonesia second and then Brazil, Brazil one year I I was like they were about to promote me as a, a Latin America head for in Huawei right okay uh, for uh, I mean for what I was doing I was doing solution consulting they wanted to build a for twenty seven twenty twenty whatever twenty eight year old twenty seven year old oh. also that's that's how and 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 the pay would have been phenomenal. Right, because uh, you were paid like parity with let's say US dollar pay, oh. and pay would have been phenomenal. Tight, great title, and at Huawei, that too. Oh. Right, you don't grow so quickly, yeah. so it was very hard to refuse. Yeah, but I hated my work chef. Really, the work culture was like. I and think, this is a Latin America thing, or this is a Huawei thing at that time? Uh, no, I think in general, no Huawei thing. I think work was fine. So okay, Huawei thing. The work culture in China versus the Brazil versus in India versus Indonesia was different. Oh, is it? There was local flavor to the culture. Okay. It was not just the Huawei culture. Correct. So I think uh, the reason I hated that is because I I feel like I sort of got distracted into just chilling out in life. I had a very good social circle. Brazil is like all about party. I yeah. party a lot. Right. Like so. so that was single time you guys married. Single, but, single, single. Okay. Right. Yeah. Single and and like. Oh, that is great. Party yeah. in Brazil. Right? <laughs> yeah. So every day was a party and like I, I think I sort of, it was fun for the first three months and then you start thinking what am I doing in my life, right? Uh, so that has started happening and that's where I so, sort of was not very happy in being there because I thought if I be here, I will do this because my social circle was very, very strong in Brazil. Ah. So every evening I would get a message or a call by 4, 4.30 in the evening. There's a plan. Let's go, yeah, let's go. Plan me, let's go. We're getting the car. <laughs> let's go. Huh? Plan to, we'll figure it out. Right, plan when goes nowhere. So I mean, we right. So so that I think was a big distraction. And then you're out for like five six hours, and and yeah, you start like I said for three months, and then you start thinking here, what are you So then I had a choice to make. I think the okay. So by the end of Huawei, almost sixty seventy percent of my loan was paid off. Okay. So there was some loan still pending. How about mobile? This is a mobile loan. Ha, mobile loan. Right, most of it was paid off. Ha. So who math me chalaga? If it was pay off, okay, but then I can. Correct. Like free. jump, right? Uh, yeah, the whole math to I mean, look, uh, a failed entrepreneur is more dangerous than a successful one, <laughs> right? Correct. You, you always want to go back one more yeah. time, <laughs> right? So, so or you have the loan with the loan go get them, and then basically uh, 70 80 percent. So then I said, let me do this because if I go back to Brazil, I will go back to Brazil. Because I have to commit to the company, ah. right? I didn't feel it was fair for me to say yes, go there as a Latin America head, and then leave in six months or one year. Mm. I had to, I would have to commit four five years. I didn't want to do that, so then I quit Huawei in 20, 2011, Marchish, right? Uh, yeah, and then I had no idea what to do. But loan thoda bachata, jada nahi bachata. Uh, but I still had to make money, so I started freelancing, right? Writing code for people online. Uh, so that would get the loans out, and uh, we would keep moving forward. So okay. that is how the open. So side, usi side project open source we start okay. Get up. Okay. Right. Uh, so I started writing code, and I found my co-founder online. Uh, I mean, I didn't know he was like Mike. Was like the name Mike. Uh. Right. Uh, yeah, he likes to call himself Michael, but I call him Mike. <laughs> I call him Mike. But uh, 
Right. So I pinged him. He was in Brazil or you guys were like... No, he was in France. So he was like remote, whatever. Remote, remote. No, so I, I saw his code on GitHub. I pinged him and said, you're writing similar code to what I'm writing. Ah. Why don't we do this together? Okay. Right. And he said, yeah, sure. Right. So because it's open source, it's yeah. a company. So you don't need to build that trust and relationship. Yeah, sure. Nothing is required, right? So yeah, I mean, we just started writing code. Um, three, four months later, it sort of took a very good direction. We got a community around it. And somebody posted it online. Some media firm, um, right, posted it online. Uh, and it sort of started getting traction. But what were you guys writing? So basically, this code, what it did was, so, if, so as a consumer, if you call a call center, contact center, right, like a bank or a hospital. Credit or card or whatever. Huh? Uh, you get that IVR, which is, IVR is press one for support, press two for sales, debit card, then what? credit card, whatever, all those numbers. The flow, basically. Uh, well, that flow, right? So that thing is quite complicated. You have to have physical hardware, there's the software that's driving it. You need telco expertise, all of that. Uh-huh. Our software, what it did is, you can write If you can write Python, PHP, Java, .NET, you can do all of this without knowing all the telecom complexity. Or hardware dedicated to me, which may normal laptop, any regular server. So that was the framework that it was built. And the thought process was very simple. The market of web developers and uh, mobile developers, for every... 30 mobile and web developers, there was one telco developer. So demand supply problem, right? If you, inc- and, and all the funding was happening in that market. Correct. In 2011, right? And mobile developers was, uh, more developers was going up because Apple had launched iPhone in 2008. Oh, uh-huh. So we said, uh-huh. and look, communication is the lifeblood of everyone, businesses. Correct. Correct. It's a lifeblood, it's not a good to have. So if you brought that lifeblood to a larger audience with a more supply audience, disruption will automatically happen. That was the thought process, right? And we came from telecom background. Mike also came from that background. So that's why we could do that, right? So, so we did that. We put it out. That's why I started gathering a community because there were problems. Uh, right? So all people suddenly interested. Ho so that's what the whole problem was in terms of what we were solving. And yeah, that's how it took off. And tell me, what, like, how did it, find, like, it took off in the sense you started selling it directly to enterprise? No, no, we didn't sell it at all, right? It was an open source project. Uh, so there was a lot of inquiries. What... My plan was very clear. I need to pay off my loan. <laughs> I need money. Yeah, my plan was very, very clear. Because I had to pay the money back, right? 10, 15 percent And I have two dogs at my house and all of that. So you still can't live a very lean lifestyle. You're not alone. Yeah. Right? So uh, so basically, I said, open source to career. And then we started consulting for the, our own project. So because of freelance, we were doing it for everything else. Go uh-huh. random project, WordPress install. Kar do. You know, this, you do this, do that. Like all of that Upwork sort of work. Uh, right? Uh, uh, Upwork, right? Yeah, yeah. Upwork sort of work. Uh, I don't think Upwork existed back then, uh, but yeah. So that kind of work is what we were doing. I was doing before. Mm. With this now, he said, I will only do freelance consulting work for that open source project. Because we see request. And I'll charge by the hour. Okay. My rates went up. Like we were charging, I think, $60, $70. An hour. An hour, right? In some cases, we charge $100 an hour. People were willing to pay it. Right, because who the problem with the solving important, huh? Ah, important, right? So, so we made money like that for four, five months. Mike also started helping, and we would split. Uh, so that's how we made money for the first five, six months. Then we okay. got invited at a conference in Chicago. Okay, an open source conference, right? So, we had never met, by the way. Mike and I never met. It was all online, on Google Talk. Uh, there was no video calling. Wow. It was a chat, Google Talk, right? Uh Email, email both. I think email. Email bhi nahi karega. G, G talk karega. Ah, G talk correct. Uh, Usko client that for, for your <laughs> Windows and uh, Mac to use nahi karega. Uh, Windows, Windows uh. and Linux, right? Like that, that's what we used to use. Ah, uh. so it was only chat, right? So, so we hit it off, right? Uh, in terms of uh, you know personalities, were very similar and different, but very similar also. Similar age group or like? No, no, he's older than me. Okay, uh, right? I I called him the oldie. Like, <laughs> he's five years older than me. Okay. Right, so he and but he looks ten years younger than me. <laughs> he's French, right? He's French, DNA, so he looks much more younger. Uh, right, uh, so yeah, but whatever. So so that happened, and uh, basically, you know. So you met at the Chicago conference. Yeah. So at the that. Chicago conference, uh, basically we said we'll go to meet for the first time. It's like a blind date, right? Uh, you know so much about each other already. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was weird <laughs> when you meet the first time. But fifteen minutes in, like we would. Kicked it off because we're discussing this code may a problem. Hai. Uh, you need to reorganize this piece. You need to push this code. That's the discussion. Uh, then you don't care, right? Like uh, we're in a different mode. Correct. So I, I spoke at that conference and presented Plevo's open source framework. We got a few. Were people. you calling it Plevo then or was it? No, it was called uh, Telephony. No, no, actually, 
It was called telephony before this. By then, we had, we started calling it Plevo. Yes, Plevo. Okay. Yeah. In July, we named it Plevo. Eleven, two thousand eleven. Huh. Ah, but, but like for between May till July, it was called telephony. Telephony. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the I E French telephony. Ah. I E. Okay. Right. Okay. So, but then we realized we Google for search million in Correct. Correct. So then Plevo used here. And that's mm. I have a fetish for five letter domains. I have tons of them. <laughs> Amigo was five letters. Guapo was five letters. Bella is five letters. <laughs> right. Everything's five letters in my life. <laughs> right. So so uh, Plevo was five letters. Right. So, so that's how all of this happened, and then uh, I picked one of the domains and put it there. Uh-huh. So, basically, uh, you know, after the like I spoke in the conference, a few folks came up to me and said, "Look, open source is great. I can use you guys for like consulting and stuff." Uh-huh. But I think the challenge we are having is, uh, it has two more components that are critical for us. 2011 normally strong about cloud, so they said we still have to hire the servers. We have to install and manage it. Can you put this on the cloud? Okay. Second is. Your software is doing all the IVR mm. logic piece, correct? Right. But what about the telecom piece? Meaning, how do I get a phone number to call? Right. So, so that was also a problem. We said we are not into that business. But he said, if you do that, I'll pay you. I'll be paying customer. He said, what do you mean by paying customer? He said we'll be paying on a monthly basis for the calls we make and everything else. And we had a competitor in the market. We saw their business model. We said, yeah, let's do it. Right. Uh, this. Person was with that competitor, right? Oh, yeah. So, so I, we thought like when he says pay you, he will pay us like what we earn from a consulting business. Yeah, how? So it'd be, I, I mean, we were thinking it'd be like two thousand three hundred dollars a month, right? Uh, so we didn't even ask him how much. So that's another mistake. Uh, we didn't ask him how much it would be, right? Uh, it worked out well. But yeah, he couldn't bomb. Yeah, <laughs> right. So that's another, I think, learning. So we do on variable basically. No, you would pay us for a, on a usage basis. Ha, so variable, basically on variable. Ha, ha. Very minimum consumption. Right? Ha. ha, but luckily it worked for us. Okay. So how much were you guys making as opposed to the consulting gig which you thought it would? Yeah, yeah, this was in hundred, like fifty thousand dollars, dollar plus. Because you get so much volume. What are you saying? Yeah, per month. Right. So and this, out. this you and Mike? Yes, there's nobody else. Oz, your code? That's it. Making fifty thousand dollars a month. Ah, no, we had to also pay our carriers now because we had added the Correct. carrier. Correct. Correct. Added hosting, so. Ha. All those nuances came in, uh, but they were actually paying that one money to the competitor, right? Uh, and the, so, so what worked out well for us is we didn't. Uh, I mean, they had large volumes, but the learning here for everybody who's listening is like whenever you get customers on board, it is important that you qualify the customer. Yeah. Right. If you don't qualify the customers, like for example, what if that ended up being a five hundred dollar customer? Correct. Correct. You could have bombed. Correct. Because we were earning more money on services. Correct. Absolutely. I think it's very very important to sort of. Make sure that you know you qualify your customer. You ask them what exactly are they spending. Yeah. How much are they willing to pay? All of that. Yeah. And I think yeah. So I think it's actually it's such an important thing because, for example, in our in our in our in our business, we sell razors and shaving cream and shaving foam, right? So our customer is also maybe a retail consumer like you and me going to a store or going onto an Amazon or going onto Blinkit or going into a DMart and buying two razors or buying one razor, two cartridges and a shaving foam. But Ritika, for example, set up this entire business around institutional sales, where sometimes the customer is a pharma client right. who wants to buy the products and gift it to doctors, for example. Or it could be yesterday we were with India's top five-star ho- hotel chains, where every time a customer in a hotel chair in a hotel room and they're bu- they're spending fifteen thousand rupees per night now, if they want a shaving kit, they ca- they can't get a disposable razor right. and a sachet, right? so they're looking right. for something better. Right. We did not realize until we went deep with these guys mm. to understand that they want a million shaving kits a month per hotel chain. Mm. And this is every month. The real Allah value comes from there. And not only is my customer buying so high, but the customer is also giving the product to use to all my potential consumers yeah, yeah. who will come and buy. And also it becomes an aspiration brand, right? Exactly. And it did not hit us for so long. We were trying it, but until it actually happened and starts working out for us, we had not qualified the customer as smartly as we should have because otherwise our effort would have been very different. It was a, right. You have to develop something. You have to develop the right kind of sachet. You have to, if you have to differentiate of Gillette, you have to really right, right. kind of, because you have to move the brand away to a newer, younger brand. Yeah. The product has to be much better. But you're right. I think qualifying the customer is so important. I think it. I think the biggest job of a founder or a CEO is capital allocation, time allocation, resource allocation. And if you're not able to qualify your customers, then all three go for a toss because then you're not able to 
and in this case it, it's great it just worked out but i think it could have bombed <laughs> yeah. right like it could have bombed uh, and and we actually spent one month building for what he asked for without knowing that this is going to be yeah absolutely no my get no idea no both of us didn't have, like i was supposed to be the business guy <laughs> <laughs> so my and both of us writing code but Mike is a CTO. Mm. You now, right? Like so, I was supposed to be the business guy, uh. and I didn't do my job. <laughs> it was all credit card, right? So he paid. I didn't even look at the thing, and then like when we look at the usage, right? The usage was, in, and we didn't have reporting, so that's the other thing. Oh, and we two folks, we just set up the cloud. There was no reporting, no nothing. So you run the reporting at the end of thirty days, right? So hoping you make some money. Uh. When you run it, I thought there's a mistake in the <laughs> invoice, right? It was a postpaid invoice. We didn't have Correct. a prepaid billing system and all of that. So I thought there's a mistake in the billing. Like I, I, I told Mike like something's wrong. The invoice is too high, right? Uh, so let's spend more time. So we took three, four days, four or five reconciliations to just even make sure the number was right. And when we saw that number, we freaked out because what if the customers are not going to pay, and we had to pay the telco carriers? So that liability was sitting on you guys, uh, right? You know, we both of us like freaked out. So then it worked out. Yeah, he paid and everything worked out. <laughs> there were customers for. And this is now like this is now a repeat business. Like this is like every. Yeah, it's a it's a consumption based business on a monthly basis, right? So. And then you that's then you took that model and. Yeah, right? yeah. We just actually then ran open source parallelly for like almost one more year. Okay. And then we realized this is the business because everybody sees value in all three layers being together, not just one of these layers. Okay. For our viewers who may not understand tech so well, I'm who for whom. So your. Plevo story is fascinating, Venki. Venki is also a pilot over, by the way. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but what is fascinating for me is that you have built out a, what I've, I've been told, $100 million or close to $100 million business, which is profitable with almost zero or close to no funding. You have resisted capital from venture capital or private equity or whatever. Then yeah. after your first round, you and Mike have been, and which is very different from our story, for example, because we still are in a stage where we're building a brand and we need to put money in the brand and we're raising money. So there is a certain amount of um, fascination slash um, success orientation around capital raises. People think that if you raise money, you're successful because yeah. someone has ascribed value to you, yeah. right? which is also fair. Yeah. But you've done, you've built a $100 million profitable business, which is now gold dust in my view. Uh, but if you could explain to a viewer who does not understand tech or SaaS or uh, telecom industry as well, how would you explain it to someone? What do you do and how have you over a period of 12 years, you and Mike have built a $100 million profitable business with such amazing capital efficiency? Sure. I think there are two things. So it's ah, go through correct. layer by layer, right? So, ah. so I think just just to understand, I mean, this is how my, I tell anybody who's non-tech. Ah. Right. Uh, so, so think of it from a consumer perspective. Because everything we power is on a consumer side. Mm. It may be sold to a business, but ultimately you as the consumer is experiencing it. Right. That customer engagement is what is happening here. So as a consumer, let's talk about use cases. Correct. I think let's start there. Right. Tech is what is powering it. Correct. So simple use cases when you install, let's say one of these messaging apps. WhatsApp. Uh, uh, any messaging app, right? Uh. Any OTT messaging app. When you install the app, they need to verify a phone number. Right. That's an OTP use case. Now that's powered by us globally for a lot of brands, right? So behind the scenes, when that SMS is sent or the voice call is made ah. to verify your number, that's done by Plevo. So your layer is Plevo. Plevo layer is doing it for. Yeah. So so uh, so one of these brands would call our us when I say call systems will their system will call our system, ah. right? In fancy terms, it's called API, ah. <laughs> right? So so let me quickly explain what an ah. API is. I think that'd be interesting yeah. to the audience, right? So very non-jargon terms, as consumers or as humans. How do you access the internet? You ask, or, or how do you talk to the internet? Through a web browser. Correct. Right? So you go type and you talk to a web browser, browser and then you fetch internet information from other side of the world. Correct. How do systems online talk? They can't go on a web browser and talk. Correct. However, they communicate with each other is called an API. Correct. Right? That's very simple, plain terms. So two systems have to talk to each other, it's API. So we have APIs available and we say to our customers, your systems can talk to our systems. Okay. So whenever they need to send an OTP, they, their system will tell our system. Okay. I need to send an OTP. And our system will send that. And we do this globally. Okay. SMS wise, both of the channels, okay. right? All of those channels are about. That's one use case. That's so it's, one. A, it's a, it's a three-part. So there's a tel, 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 telco provider, there's a consumer, and then there's the business. Yes. Okay. Think, yeah. Uh, yes. And that's one use case. One example. Another example is let's say 
you know you are talking to like you've ordered something on zomato zomato or or an uber or ah. what have you right any of these apps urban company or whatever. whatever any of these apps globally on the other side especially if it's a marketplace app they don't want the privacy to to be like they don't want your number to go out to the other side they don't want the other sides to so, sort of harass you later on what for whatever you the delivery partner or whatever marketplace model ah. right it could be delivery partner driver any whatever. marketplace ah. model so there there you get code number masking correct that number both both the sides were seeing the number is not the real number that's in the landline 011 whatever whatever, whatever that's right whatever. it could correct. be any number right and that's a temporary number for just that session like once your delivery is over that number is just gone correct right so that's another use case so that's also powered by us like this we have about 15 20 30 use cases and all of this was actually the germination of all of this actually comes from your 15 year old card delhi bombay uh business actually in in hindsight pop pop probably because you've not really moved very far it's become a lot more sophisticated and a lot no. more you know but the the genesis seems to be my in yeah, any I mean, people talk to each other over the internet it just happened that way right like my <laughs> first first thing was that uh, 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 and first company was a telecom company Correct. i worked in Huawei somehow things just happened yeah, the momo thing seems to be like <laughs> that seems to be an aside but we'll find out what i mean some maybe there's some meaning to it then later in life maybe there is yeah right but, you, but, you picked a four letter word with momo so i, I think that, <laughs> no momos so it's a five letter word right momo i'm not given up by the way every week there is momo there by place <laughs> wherever i am right i could be anywhere in the world momos are always in my place there is the bay area right i found a place in texas and austin Really? So they have momos. Yeah, yeah, they have really good momos. <laughs> I was in Boston meeting my team. Uh, right. Uh, I found momos there. Uh, right. Uh, the Nepalese momos, uh, but still very similar. Amazing. Yeah. So the use case. So there's number masking. There's a, there's a first use case around the uh, business plus consumer OTP etc. So all of this is powered by 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 Plea. Yeah. So think of our platform as a Lego platform. Okay. Lego blocks, right? So you provide all these different blocks. Now the way you are as a business. we don't offer you everything packaged correct you can take our blocks arrange it the way you want and that's what our apis do you can arrange the way you want so then you get a otm use case if you arrange it a certain way if you arrange it a certain way it becomes a number masking use case okay so ours is a broad horizontal platform mm. where it's available for different use cases that's what plevo provides and your your consumption base your your enterprise customers your consumers are mostly us are they majority Asia? revenue us majority revenue us right uh from a business perspective okay uh, and are your teams etc distributed or engineering yeah, so, so tech teams engineering product are, are in india uh, the international sales team is in india support teams as well the go to market teams for us is in us so uh, customer success marketing support sales all of that is in us and you split time between us and yeah, india for the last 13 years right so i i travel every 3 to 6 months back and forth wow yeah so so uh, so i have two houses Uh, and then just travel back and forth and where where is your where, where are ba- where are your bases Bo- uh, okay so for the first my base or the company's base initially uh, was in california and san francisco till 2019 uh, in 2019 we decided to move to texas uh, a lot of people did that no no but elon followed us after that so <laughs> i i i i i don't want to take credit for that right so that was my fanboy moment okay. he, he moved to texas four months after we moved okay, huh. right cuz like everybody was asking us why are you moving there ah. and once i think tesla moved there everybody ah. was like okay this is good 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 it happened okay and then, okay. then covid happened and then lot of companies must start moving right so it's happened in that order and now it's fashionable to be in different states which part of texas are you austin austin okay yeah beautiful part now bro yeah yeah it's it's an interesting place okay. uh, right? so your entire team is based your us team is based so no, you everybody is remote in us but we do have uh, a good chunk of folks in in austin right but now we are just completely so we don't have any office anymore both in india and us we gave up our office in covid i have seen it yeah yeah there is no office now it's all remote 100% remote everybody is remote there is no office so we are all going to be back to yes 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 we don't want to go back to office really yeah i mean we trying something else i can talk about that in a minute but yeah. but, but we trying something else we want to try a hub and spoke model okay uh, but we don't want to go back to office speak about like you you are okay without face time which is real no no so we want to fix that Okay. Right. So I think what we're realizing as a company is uh, engagement starts dropping dramatically, right? Without FaceTime in person. So we want to do hub and spoke spoke model where we create Bangalore as a hub, have most of our folks there, right? So in one tagline, work happens on Zoom, mm. relationships are built offline. So meet enough number of times informally. Don't meet to do work. 
right? Like meet at a coffee shop, you know, building that trust layer. We've, you know, read the five dysfunctions of yeah. team. The bottommost layer is trust. Correct. So build that offline. You cannot do that on Zoom, mm-hmm. right? So and when you meet, like, don't discuss work. Yeah. Get to know each other better. Talk about like. Are you able? To, are you able to first? It's uh, it's hard. It's a hard problem to solve. with working on that now. I think it'll take us next twelve to eighteen months. Right, I think it'll take us that much time. But what I don't want to do is do this two days back to work. Yeah. Because that makes it very, very difficult to build either this culture or that culture. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, w- I would, ra- like, if this doesn't work ever, which I don't think it should be the case, then it's better to just go back to five days back to work office. Mm. If you lose two days back to office, what happens is three days work happens. And two days when people are meeting, they're not clear on what they're supposed to do. Is it work? Uh. Is it relationship? <laughs> and there's no clarity around that. There's no direction. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, we want to try this model out and, 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 you know, focus on making that work. Okay. That's what we're focusing on at this point. Fantastic. Fantastic. But tell me about, uh, so that's Plevo, right? So, that's the business of Plevo. Uh, and your, 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 all your revenue is from enterprise. Okay. Not, ent- I wouldn't say enterprise, from businesses. Businesses. Businesses, right? And then in that, like, we have different segments. And it's all usage based. Yes. Consumption based. So, for the SMSs you send or the calls you make and all of that is how we charge. So it's a very simple model. You don't have to worry about software. You don't have to worry about cloud hosting, server, nothing. It's all per minute and per consumption based model. So for the business, it's very, very tough. The parallels to your first business are amazing. Though. Even there, it was an ad based yeah. on, on number of calls made. So you're, you're kind of yeah. figure out something. But it was free there. Uh, Over here, <laughs> it's not free. Correct. You're charging money. Yeah, you're charging money. Correct. Yeah, you're charging money. And, and yeah, I mean, I think uh, that's what helped us scale in terms of revenue. Because like I said, we're solving something which is the lifeblood of businesses. The people will pay for it. Yes, businesses not care about it. Right? Yeah, they, care, they care about it. So, and, and you add value. And now we've launched three more products. Okay. And when I say products, we're calling it, uh, think of it like as package solutions. Okay. So what we realize is this audience, we're selling our initial platform, the Lego audience. Lego is used by home, right? Like builders or, correct. you know, hobbies or geeks correct. or whatever. Correct. Whatever. Correct. correct. So our audience with our platform offering is tech folks. So engineering leaders, product managers, developers, those are the folks who use that product. Yeah. Right? But the, I mean, if you think about it, customer engagement is not limited to that. Right? So you as a consumer are engaging with Sugi, as an example, go to your support side, support section and raise a ticket uh-huh. or chat with them. Correct. Right? So what we all want to basically do now is, you know, look at it from a larger perspective. So we're solving it for one function within a business. How can we solve it for each business yeah. function? Right, so, oh sorry, each, each function in the business. Correct. So support teams. So we're launching a SaaS solution now. It's called, we've launched a SaaS solution, it's called Contacto. That is a SaaS solution that, you know, it's for B2C companies and powers their entire experience. Starting from chatbots, you know, to a call, right, to transitioning to different channels and so on and so forth. And we want to do that for sales teams, we want to do that for marketing teams. Uh, so you want to run a marketing engagement, let's say for Bombay Shaving. We have a solution now, sir. Uh, right? And then if somebody has a support request, you can just plug that into your app. Good and go. yeah, I'm doing my sales pitch right now, but whatever. <laughs> right? You plug that into the app. Uh, and this is good to go. Yeah, that's one of the other reasons I want to meet you. <laughs> well, for sure. Yeah, so right? So, 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 and all of this works end to end. Right? So, so that's what, so we now, the way we define our company stages are the first 11 to 12 years of the co- company was essentially about, uh, you know, doing customer engagement or solving for customer engagement from a business perspective, for tech teams. And now we're solving this for pretty much every layer in the business, right? That's how we're looking at it. That's incredible. Yeah, that we're is... just launching that now. And same model, right? Like, with this launch now, the, the model is very simple, which is, uh, now the way I look at it is how Plevo's transitions. Plevo's a conglomerate co- conglomerate of companies, or a startup studio. Ah. Each of these pods is a startup on its own. Correct. You will fund them till X million dollars in revenue and then they have to be profitable in scale. On their own. Uh-huh. On their own. Right. So so that's our larger vision of like But they all kind of play together in, yeah, in yeah, that yeah. in that layer. They dog food each other and, and they help us cross sell, upsell, all of that stuff. Right? But they dog food I, this is a term I've heard like for the fourth time in the last ten days. Really? I never heard it before. Dog food? I never you heard dogs, it. right? Yeah, I do, but I I didn't hear of like some who was telling me this? A oh, friend of mine who works in Google, like I can get this and then it's a dog food phone because it's pixel. I'm like, what does that even mean? I didn't ask. Then I went and searched for it and then asked him. Like that's the thing. When you learn a new word, sure. So you see it everywhere. And like, yeah, I'm hearing you. You know what that's called? It's called reticular activation. 
What is it called, Sunny? This phenomenon, uh. when you learn something new uh. or you're thinking about something constantly, uh. you only see that. Like you want to buy a car model or uh. a brand, uh. you only see those cars on the road. Uh. You'll not see anything else. I'm suddenly feeling the... Yeah, this is all I'm showing. The world is conspiring against me or for me. It's or am ready. I late to the it's party? It's a scientific term, it's called reticular activation. Reticular activation? Yeah. yeah. Oh, right? wow. so, so the whole thing about secret, have you seen the documentary Secret? No. What secret? Is no. That you aspire for things and you'll get it. This is a documentary. Puri Kainat type. Ha, 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 ha. So there's a English version of it. It's called The Secret. Oh, okay. Right? Uh, you can watch it. It's on YouTube. Okay. Right? Uh, so it's built on this scientific concept of radical activation. Wow. So, I have noticed this. That whenever I learn a new word, no, I suddenly start reading it in the paper. Yeah. It suddenly start appearing. It works. Yeah. Right? If you want something really, really badly, you get it. And <laughs> so it works from this principle of radical activation. And now, like, neurologists are saying how to hack your brain yeah. to use the concept of radical activation. You know what the Gen Z word for this is, though? Mm. Manifestation. Oh yeah, exactly. So secret, so secret is around manifestation, right? And and the concept, scientific concept behind that is reticular activation. Wow. So that's why you probably see dog food everywhere. <laughs> thought, thought type. Which, which is your dogs telling you I need better food. <laughs> <laughs> no wait. <laughs> better food. Uh, Mengi, I think fascinating to see what you've built with Plevo and just to like see their entrepreneurship in so many interesting, fascinating ways across geographies, across. Business models across from momos to uh, uh, you know being a fifteen-year-old in a five-star hotel, buying uh, infrastructure for f Delhi Bombay calls to make STD cheaper, to then building Plevo with a French co-founder, uh, and now running a hundred million dollar top-line business, profitable. You've raised, you've been so efficient on capital. Raised only two million from Y Combinator and Qualcomm, and I think that was around right, uh, but. That's not fundamentally how today, when the markets are what they are, people celebrate profitable companies who have not raised money. But for a long time, and I'm sure when the markets become bullish again, people start celebrating fundraisers. It already started happening, right? But you have resisted the temptation. You have been very efficient on capital. And it's a hugely critical skill, something which I would love to learn as well. But talk about your relationship with capital raising to fund Plevo. Because you seem to have done it by customer money, which is the best way to do it. But talk about those trade-offs and, and that journey. I, I start with a little bit of context, right? So both of us, Mike and I, come from a very bad background. So I think the whole thought process is like you cannot spend the money till you earn it. Yeah. It's very, very hard. So even so whatever money we raised, the couple of million dollars initially, that's the same problem we realized that. Like our investors would want to spend us faster and we just couldn't. Right? So what we realized is even if we raised, like we just couldn't allow our sets to rewire. Can I ask you a question? Maxing out on 35 lakhs of loans for that Momo business and then having to pay it back over many years, did that shape your relationship with fundraising to say, I don't want to ever be in, even though that was debt and equity is not debt, but emotionally it's still money, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think uh, that and, and also the thing that like, what happens when you run out of money, right? What if nobody gives us money then? So, that two million, so what we realized over time, and now we reflect on it, both Mike and I, and when we talk, when we're, you know, having dinners, lunches, whatever, is we as founders have grown more confident in terms of our decision making, our leadership, our ability to run, all of that, when we see more cash in the bank. That's a light bulb moment for us. Now we reflect back on it, right? And we also had cash in the bank, we raised money, but that would always be borrowed. So it will not be yours. You don't feel it's yours. We don't know. And if you're like, if you if you're spending that money, then I have to go raise from somebody. Yeah. If I raise that money, if nobody gives me that money, then what happens? So that I think, you know, coming from my background and all that, middle class upbringing, all of that, I think is is always been there. And now when I see, you know, we have good cash in the bank now. We have you know ten plus percent EBITDA sort of each year. It's healthy cash in the bank we put each year, right? And that gives us a lot of confidence. Now we're able to launch three new products. I don't care about, you know, the next 12 months, 18 months, recession cycles, all that. We don't have a bun on that. That gives us even more confidence. But I think everybody says cash is king. I think your own cash is king. Yeah. Right? Not just any cash is king. Your own cash in the back is king. Yeah. When you look at it, you could think, I mean, this is our, this, I'm not saying this will work for everyone. Yeah. This is what works for us. And cash is king, but cash generation through business is just so critical, right? It's, I think very powerful, right? So, so, so that's, I think, where it starts. So that's a bit of context. Uh, and I think your early days where you kind of got that $50,000 a month with your first customer and 
you know all fairness we did want to raise this 2 million dollars ha the reason we raised actually we raised for yc and and region or which and battery well ha the reason we raised this money is because we do not come with the credibility and we had to sell i mean we were both immigrants in the states right my co-founder and i so we had to create that brand so we create a and we platform business ha. so companies have to be able to trust you to be able to build something on that way yeah and we are not a you know nth time founder we are yeah. first time founder at this scale yeah like tech business nobody care about my momo business yeah nobody does right <laughs> correct so we need credit in any way and hence investments why we raise money but for us and we did not raise some seed venture or, uh, or angels it was it was, it was seed money but yeah. it was not from angels we okay. tried to have raised some brands so i raised our wage battery ventures for our ventures that's why we wow. to me put that there and 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 raise money it was like rub off credibility for you guys yes. and we never spent right so you just you couldn't <laughs> when we just yeah it comes at a con though right okay so I, i'll tell you there were moments when you know we would get incoming interest and we almost said yes what was it yeah something was that didn't work out and i said it was great that it didn't work out right like valuation didn't work out or what happened i think all the first step on their stuff right you know some terms or whatever huh. uh, and and i think and anjan it's great it now like as recent as let's say 2021 right in in during covid where all of my peers were raising money and and insane valuations right we all we were all tempted our fundraise obviously is not going to be a 20 30 million dollar fundraise round because we have more cash in the bank yeah. so there's no point raising that kind of money it be a large round like 100 plus and for b2b businesses 100 plus not even yeah so we were we were on that part to see if, you know we got incoming interest we were like okay let's talk let's see what can be done mm. all of that and we were almost tempted into it but then the market started crashing in the new back i think like that was the god blessing moment <laughs> but you never wanted to like kind of give out secondaries we liquidate some esops for you and mike to kind of make some money you on the side when we were able to generate cash and divide it out yeah i mean like you can we can be have our options now we haven't we can be we have a lot of options we can divide it out we can do esop based bonuses yeah buybacks maybe yeah buybacks uh, or esop based bonuses yeah. like whatever you have i don't want to buy back but i'll give you bonuses like pseudo dividends ah uh, not calling it a dividend but but there are a lot of different in interesting structures we can play correct correct so that's our model uh, but it's taken you 11 years so do you feel sometimes that the if you would have raised capital let's say from some other deals that you walked away from yes. you would have been able to crunch the time absolutely, absolutely. there's no doubt about it because if you look at our, you know competitors and market leaders then they're further along okay or have any perspective right uh you know closer to a billion dollars in it right uh, or or actually more than that but they're losing insane amount of money even today they're losing like almost a billion dollars even today and their revenue i think is like 3 3 billion is it who's the who owns this company will you right ah, revenue you owns yeah revenue is 3 billion but they're losing a billion dollars each year public market count right and i i admire the ceo for what he's been right they're compared as so i fight hard <laughs> but i admire the ceo for what he's been but i think uh i wouldn't want to be either running up here cuz you can wake up every morning you have got on your head every 3 months your numbers to present to public market or growth and so on yeah, yeah, yeah. so when it's good when it's all great amazing yeah but now how do you go back and tell your team my stock is down 90% how do you how do you get everyone motivated right cuz it's it's hard cuz there's a gun on the head every 3 months and they're all the public mass market sort of shenanigans that yeah, and and when you um, what we like ipo was very romantic even for us for example there's an ipo board in our uh, but right like you take a nasdaq picture you pop up the champagne bottle you know <laughs> what are you getting already started and, and then you back to the grind you're back to the grind and the issue is now your share price is defined by people who may not understand the business as well as you do you are at the mercy of analysts you are at the mercy of retail investors you are at the mercy of public reputation you're the mercy of perception of consumer if you're a brand there's just so much downside to being a lot of my friends who are like in the private equity space they like ipo is not as great it's very romantic to have your business being created value for the public um reliance and dhirubhai ambani and all of those stories are great yeah. uh but 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 you look that's is better fundamentally very very strong business, business with cash in the bank correct right but i don't think most companies do that way in india and us wherever right i mean i'm talking about a competitor yeah no dip to them right but i don't want to be a leader having that kind of company it's as simple as that it, that's I, i don't think i'm the right person i wouldn't be excited getting out of bed every day morning 
sort of be running that sort of style of a company. Yeah. If it works for somebody else, great. Doesn't work for me, doesn't work for Mike. And we don't want to build that kind of company. One of the core things we have is, look, we have gotten to where we've gotten so far by not doing a few things. And what are those things? Not worrying about how much money we can raise. What is a competitor doing? Actually, we did a lot of that competitor doing thing in the initial. That's right. Yes. Really mistake. We realized that. Become mature over a bit. Yeah, exactly. Like what really matters at the end of the day, we realize is, are you adding value to your customers? Because they are the ones who are paying you money, not your competitor. Correct. Right? They are the ones who are paying you money every day. And you could generate enough cash from that to be able to run the business. So why not just focus on that one thing? In fact, that's what we have now. Everybody talks about values to put on a slight tech. Right? We didn't have values for six, seven years of the company. We did not. Okay? We, we didn't even think of like, we should even be worried about values. And then we did an offsite. There was a discussion on like, let's create value. Uh-huh. So why worry about all these creative fancy things? Let's talk about what's worked for us. And that's the number one thing that worked for us, customer obsession. Do what is right for the customers, even if in the short term it's hurt. Right, so that's that's our number one value. I mean, obviously we copied the lingo from Amazon, but like we actually first thought what, what really matters, like what, what works for me and Mike? What worked for our first and employees, right? What's gotten us to our $10 million family? What's got to our $25 million? Because when you get to 100 plus, if you can still repeat these same things, we can keep going. That's how we got to our value. So number one is customer obsession. You spoke about ownership, that's a number two way. I call it over mindset. Owner yeah, mindset. mindset, yeah. Right? So so that's the second thing. In, in that, like, what we realized over time is we would say to everybody initially, solve the problem and get it done. Right? Today, like, for us, the definition is different. That's not enough. Owning the problem and getting done is not enough. Right? Because... To us, that status quo. What is even more important is, if you have the ownership mindset, if you were running this business, if this was your business, you also have to find the problems. Yeah. And then own it. And yeah. then get it. Yeah. Somebody giving you a problem and saying, wait, that is not ownership mindset. Yeah. Okay. Those are the new culture problems. That's a number two value. And and and, and it goes on and on. But, but that, those are, like we have five values. Okay. Right? So those are our, our you know, two values. Third is excellence. Okay. Right? Four is bias for urgency. Uh, I mean, we used to call it result oriented. Now it works with it differently. Bias for urgency, right? And then the fifth one is, uh, you know, sort of uh, learnability, high learnability, right? So when you come in, you don't know everything. That's fine. Figure it out. Get it done, right? Ask people. Figure out yourself. DIY. That builder mentality. Yeah. Those are the kind of people who will be really successful. So one more way to articulate what we mean by values is things that have really worked well for folks who've been in the company. Long enough. Yeah. So what that creates now is kind of a culture that's self-selecting. Yeah. Look, I'm not here to say that we have the best culture or we have the worst culture or any. Culture is culture. It's self-selecting. Right? Yeah. So if you have a strong culture, it it will select people who work well in that culture. Yeah. And it, it's a flywheel, right? It'll keep feeding each other. Yeah. And, and then they will do the same with their team and so on. Oh, they'll work out fine with more. Right? And and there's nothing wrong about that. Yeah. It's just that the fit doesn't matter. Yeah, the fit is not there. There's no alignment. Which is fine. It's totally okay. But it's amazing because when it comes to capital raising, no. If you're reading in the papers, if you're in the media, your founder friends are raising, your competitors are raising. You know, uh, your perception, the perception of success in your customers' mind, which in your case might be a very important thing on closing a deal, for example. How successful is uh, Plevo is based on how much money they've raised. That's just unfortunately the rhetoric, right? It would have taken a lot for you to know 10 years back, 8 years back, 6 years back that this is not the path we should take. It was not easy. I should two call, right? One point was we could have gotten further along if we had raised more money, right? With a different business model. The outflow, like the business where it is today, it may not have been where it is, right? In terms of what it is. In terms of structure, stakeholding, whatever. And the value we can create in the future. Right? Because then you are running on a 7, 10 year, 12 year timeline. Correct. Because of the VC model. Correct. Right, so so that's one. Uh, you know, generally from a from a structure uh, and and part process standpoint. And I think uh, the other con, I wouldn't call it a con. I think this is something we did not think about in our early days to be to be able to create our own brand. Like we, a lot of people don't even know what scale we are at from a revenue perspective. What have we done? You know, what we offer uh, uh, in both the geographies actually, U.S. and India. Those being our larger markets, right? Uh, and if you talk to our customers, they love us, but the generals. Folks, and, and you know what makes this even more uh, ironical is our, our product sits in the background. Yeah. So 
nobody will hear of your name till it works fine. So if you're yeah. going, if nobody knows your name, you're doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> that's the part. That's the business. So yeah. you need to you put even more work, work to like create your brand. Yeah. And we, as like you know DIY folks, would just hang down focusing on customers and processing so, about that yeah. product feature roadmap, right? Growing the revenue. But I think we could have but like in hindsight, that's one area, you know, that helps over time. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, kind of as we reach the twilight of this conversation, I think it's fascinating to see how you've built a company with such like very simple principles, but so hard to execute. And your consistency in terms of how you think about enterprise building is actually comes shining through in this conversation because you it all comes down to your core values. Um, what what is it for you for at Plevo going forward? Like. Uh, is the treadmill now at speed 15 uh, or are you saying no you know we want to do other things and the business will um, organically continue to grow uh, and we will obviously put in the same effort these five values is what we live by uh, and what is life for you outside of play over like what causes matter do we speak about 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 animals and your love for dogs of course but talk about talk about forward looking what what, what, what is it that excites you? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think a couple of things, right? So firstly, with PO, we have now decided no fundraise, no IPO. So oh, is it? That's a tag. So it's more about either buyback or do, you know, some bonuses aside to ourselves. So that's how we give liquidity for folks, right? And so if liquidity is taken care of, because that's what companies do when they go public. What is Apple doing each year? Yeah. Public market, they buy back stock. That's what he's doing each year, right? Steve, uh, Peter Peter Cook, yeah. Right? That's exactly what he's doing. So why can't we do it private as long as you can generate profits? So that's one thing. Right, uh, in, in, in terms of what it is, we we don't want to think about it like we're running at 15, we want to go at 45 or 65 or whatever. Like, we don't want to do that. We want to build it sustainably long. Right? Okay. So, the startup studio mindset, each, everything has to be profitable. We just keep investing, cash will keep coming in and it keep scaling. We want to solve, we're starting with customer engagement. We start with customer engagement for, engagement for tech teams. Now, we're doing it for support teams with contact to sales teams with cellular and then another product coming up for marketing teams for engagement. So that's our thing right now. And with AI coming in, like the industry landscape will be AI coming in. We, the, the market, the playbook is very simple if you look at all of our solutions. Pitching existing age-old markets which have existed for 20, 30 years and we're playing the displacement story. Okay. Right? Like how EVs have disrupted ice engines. You're saying, how do I displace roads? So when I do support, how do I displace the, the support agent? With contact, how do I displace the SDR or the sales rep in the sales world? How do I displace the need for a designer, graphic designer, marketer, all of that in the marketing part? So pick the same like pick large markets which exist. I don't want to create a category. I learned that with Momos. I don't want to go create markets. Pick large markets, disrupt using it, and like not just be a simple layer of ChatGPT, but like go deep and build something. Right? So that's our thing. And then let's repeat this. Wengi, uh, I think as we as we close, right? Fascinating to get to know you, man. Like, uh, you know, to to get to know what you've built, the context under which you built out Ple Ple uh, Plevo, all the things you did before it, and then you know your relationship with Mike, what you do with uh, the business in terms of value creation and doing it the right way, uh, as a lot of us are finding out the hard way is the is the right way, and then of course your level two to level eight of uh, of, of 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 things outside of Plevo um, and getting the queen. Uh, but people watching are um, they want to be they want to be entrepreneurs they want to be in the startup ecosystem they want to create value they want to be the best version of themselves that's why they come onto the barber shop and listen to people who come here uh, who have been successful and so on um, but succinct advice for a 21 year old in Ahmedabad who's already doing her or his Momo business today, whatever requirement of that there is. Uh, but advice for them as they listen to you with the with the benefit of the experience you've had till now. Yeah, I think one thing is, I, I, I this is controversial advice, but yeah. work hard, age is on your side. Right, you only want to grow older, it becomes exponentially more harder in your 30s and late 30s to be. Yeah. Right, like age will not be on your side. So okay. in your 20s, work as hard as you can, right? It's, you're not going to get back your age. I think that's number one advice. Pick a problem you're passionate about. You don't have to vote for anything and everything. Pick whatever you like, but work hard towards it. 
I, that's that's what I'm doing as well. Awesome. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the barber shop, telling your story, telling Bleevo's story, uh, telling Mike's story. Uh, and we would love to have Mike here uh, when he's uh, when he's in. The, he's here. We should do a shoot with Mike. He seems to be a really really interesting guy. Uh, so before before we let you go, we do have a Bombay shaving company hamper for you. Thank you.